But I wanted to take you to the book of Acts just for a moment. Paul, you know, was formerly known as Saul, and he persecuted the church. He was dragging men and women out of their homes, taking them to the authorities. And uh, the story is in Acts 9. But in Acts 26, Paul is actually telling his story of this road to Damascus where Jesus, like, appeared to him. You know, he fell to the ground, you know, this experience of the risen Christ. And so he's telling King Agrippa about it. And in, pick it up in verse 15, uh, Paul says, well, who are you, Lord? Right? He heard the voice from heaven. He's like, who are you? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, which is exactly the same verbiage as in, uh, in Acts 9. You know, Paul was persecuting the church, but Jesus said, you're persecuting me. So we're a part of something eternal, this kingdom of heaven. Jesus is, at, is the head of the body. He's at the forefront. He's with us, and uh, he sees. He provides. And if there's persecution going on against his church, Jesus takes it personally. But he had a plan for Paul. He said, now, now get up, verse 16, now get up, stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. And I, I want us today to see our existence as Norkenzie Christian Church as a part of the greater city church in Lane County and what God's doing around the world to understand ourselves in the same light that uh, Jesus said to Paul because we've been appointed to represent him in this. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. We are the heart of Jesus. What did he say to Paul? <laughs> he said, first of all, I'm going to rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. Paul was constantly in trouble, it seems, and he was, you know, but isn't it interesting? I'm going to rescue, Jesus, I'm going to rescue you, Saul, from your own people and from the Gentiles. Usually we think of rescuing them, rescuing is like saving you and taking you to some other place where you won't, you know, you won't experience harm. But then in the next breath, Jesus says, I am sending you to them. So the very people that Jesus says, I'm going to rescue you from them, I'm going to send you to them. I'm rescuing you from them so, I, so you can represent me to them. And notice what he says. I am sending you to them to open their eyes. We, we, we live in an age, there's great spiritual blindness, isn't there? And you may be experiencing difficulty and struggle these days, and you need the Lord to rescue you, and he will. He sees you. But he will rescue you in order to send you to the very people that are persecuting you. This is how the church has been throughout history. He saves, he guards, he doesn't, he doesn't shield us. There are horrible things that happen to Christ-following people. But he rescues and he sends. So he, wants, he says, I'm sending you to them to open their eyes. The spiritual blindness in the world, God wants us to be used by him to open the eyes of the blind. I am sending you to them uh, to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. We talked about this last week a little bit, you know, people that call good evil and evil good, people that say the dark is light and the light is dark. You know, this is the, this is the nature, this is the way of the world. And Jesus sent Paul, Jesus sends us to help turn people from darkness to light, from being enslaved to the things of the evil one, to being coming, you know, a, a, a saved, redeemed child of God. This is the thing. Where is it in the scripture? Where I think it's uh, Colossians one, Ephesians one, Philippians one, not Philippians one, uh, where he talks about he's Jesus transferred us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. This is what God has done into the kingdom of light of of His Son, whom He loves. I think it's Colossians one. Is it? Ephesians 1? 
It's not Ephesians 1. <laughs> this, is the, this is the mission of the church. We're rescued in order to be sent to help blind eyes see, to go from darkness to light, from the power of evil and Satan and the ways of this world into the kingdom of light and love. This is what Jesus did for Paul, and this is what he calls us to do. And the last phrase is important. Why? So that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. That the people that we are sent to, the people that Paul was sent to, the purpose was so that they could experience the forgiveness of all their sins. The purpose was so that their name could be written in the Lamb's book of life forever and ever and ever. That's why you're going, Paul. That's why you're going, Nurkenzi, is to help them see, help them to be saved, the forgiveness of sins, and to receive this place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. If you're if, if your faith is in Jesus today, aren't you glad that you've been sanctified by the blood of Jesus? Your sins and mine are not held against us any longer. This is truly good news. And we are rescued in order to be sent so that other people, that other people could have their place in this kingdom that have their place in this place, being people who are loved deeply and sanctified, purified by faith in Jesus. So don't grow weary in doing good, my friends. Don't shrink back from generosity. Trust God in those things. Don't shrink back from you know, giving a good word about who Jesus is and what he has done for you. And certainly, as he blesses you along the way, give him praise and honor and glory. We're called to be these people. Let's be these people. Let's, let's pray that there would be people in heaven forever because we've been here in this community. Can we do that? I mean, we're talking eternity. Let's pray. Let's pray for our community. In the next uh, few moments, we're going to have a time of uh, silent prayer. And what we will do is we will scroll through the, the 10 sectors, you know, the city church, we have groups of people, like we have healthcare professionals who monthly meet as a team to talk about current health, health uh, care needs that the church, the body of Christ in our community prays for. And our day is the 29th. So we're going to go through all 10, healthcare being one, the arts, right? Uh, first responders is one. We're going to go through 10. And as you see them on the, you're going to pray with your eyes open today. All right? I'm going to pray with your eyes open. And as you read the slide, it'll only be up there for a few seconds. But even as you pray it to yourself, just, I mean, pray it. You know, the, the, the statement will be pray for our first responders, dot, 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 whatever it says. Just say, Lord, I pray for our first responders, dot, dot. Just pray it right there. And if by chance you get to the third or the fifth one, and one of the sectors just captivates your heart. Maybe you know a first responder. Maybe you know a family. Maybe you know some circumstance in that. You don't have to finish all 10. If you feel compelled to just pour your heart out in prayer to God about that need, about that prayer request, then please do that. God hears us when we pray in Jesus' name. Amen? So let's in our spots. Just approach him now and pray for our community. Lord, you, Lord you've placed us in this place. You, you know the times and seasons for all of our lives, and here we are in this community. Give us a deeper heart and love for this community. Forgive us when we've been angry or calloused. Maybe we didn't even care. Would you soften our hearts, and as we lift up the needs of our community, would you answer as we pray in Jesus' name. And we thank you that your kingdom is beyond these walls and we get to join our hearts and our voices with our brothers and sisters in Lane County who have prayed these prayers already this month. 
We join our hearts with them and we say amen. Would you be glorified, Lord Jesus, in our community so that the blind could see, so they could turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Would you do a great work among us as we pray in your name?